Here we go. Good morning, everyone. Brand new edition of Sports Medicine Weekly on this Saturday morning. My name is Steve Casho, joined as usual by my co-host, Dr. Brian Cole, head team physician for the Chicago Bulls, sports medicine specialist, orthopedic surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. How are you, Dr. Cole? I'm doing great this morning, Steve. Good to see you. Good. Appreciate it. I'm going to start to talk about the opioid crisis, and let's uh, lead with this. Big story in Major League Baseball this summer, Los Angeles Angels pitcher Tyler Skaggs found dead in a hotel room in July, autopsy revealing he was under the influence of fentanyl, oxycodone, and alcohol. The death was ruled an accident. Now, an Angels employee has now come out to say that he supplied Skaggs with the oxycodone. My question to you, to lead off our show, as an orthopedic surgeon and a team doctor, Dr. Cole, what steps do you take to address the opioid crisis? I mean, the 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 relevant news is that this is not something that we have seen in any epidemic proportion amongst professional athletes. Uh, but the reality is it's a huge problem. And as an orthopedic surgeon, we have a primary responsibility to manage it. So, you know, one of the challenges is that um, if you just look at some of the facts in the United States, in the U.S., we consume about 80 percent of the world's opioids. Um, wow. That's, that's, and we have less than 5 percent of the population. So that's, that's kind of a staggering, a staggering fact. Um, the other the other issue is that most people get it from someone else, sort of a transfer of, of a, a prescription from one person to another that we know. And that means it's starting at a prescription level. So there's a primary responsibility as a physician when we when we prescribe narcotics. And traditionally, surgeries are obviously very painful and uh, narcotic usage is not uncommon. And we know now that uh, children and our younger patients are at much higher risk uh, for uh, opioid addiction, and they, their brains are just wired differently. So we're extremely careful for our young patients. But you know what? The the thing that I've learned over the years is that uh, we don't have to give. Uh, it, it's more about preemptive discussions and managing expectations, because none of these medications, for example, when it relates to surgery, get rid of pain. They just sort of reduce it to a level where it doesn't have as much of an impact. They sort of care about it less. So that's the first thing you have to explain to a patient and explain that pain is not dangerous and there's lots of things that can manage pain. There's ice, there's elevation, there's compression, there's Tylenol, which is very, very safe, taken in proper doses, uh, and then using anti-inflammatories uh, as and keeping on a regular schedule. I tell patients that they should set an alarm after surgery every four to six hours to make sure they take their medications. Um, and we use a combination of uh, Tylenol, um, anti-inflammatories and very low-level narcotics. And if you explain it to them up front, uh, generally speaking, they are good within two, three days, sometimes after very significant surgeries. Uh, the problem is we just weren't having those conversations years ago, and now we've taken a primary responsibility. Now, and I'm proud to say there are there's lots of data out there about how uh, about prescriber habits and our group as a whole at Midwest Orthopedics, we are very, despite the amount of surgery we do and the, and, and the level of surgery, we are very, very low on the prescription curve. And that's a, that's a big deal and it's an important step to take. So we really do have a primary responsibility with this. And um, we even deal with how patients dispose of their medications properly, you know, not just flushing them down the toilet, but actually doing it in a responsible way, having them bring them back and putting in a proper disposal situation. And, and then also making sure we don't provide refills. Um, in any you know meaningful way, unless they obviously need them, so it's a proper balance. But I think it's it's one of those things that's sort of a, a new vital sign that has to be discussed with the patient and not ignored. You know, when you did my surgery back on February nineteenth of this year, um, you prescribed some sort of painkiller. But you right. know, I took very few. Yeah, I, I remember I was. Did it make you feel guilt? Did it make you feel goofy, or were you? Did no, you I, I wanted to avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. And and I said, if I can get by with the Motrin and the Tylenol yep. and the ice and yep. the elevation or whatever, I, I just, I, I, I tried other ways and I got through it. Yeah. I did not yeah. want to take that drug, you know, yeah. but I knew if I really couldn't sleep or if it was super painful, maybe I tried one the day of surgery, but you know what? I took two or three, the whole, you gave me a whole bottle and I... I got rid of it, and I just wanted to. You know, I wanted yeah. to have it, but I just thought that was best for my body. Yeah, I mean, I I would tell you that Motrin is probably one of the best pain relievers out there if you take it the proper dose. The yeah. challenge is that Motrin or ibuprofen or Advil, all the same thing, right? Yep. Um, is two hundred milligrams over the counter. Okay. Yep. So it's a decent anti-inflammatory for low level things. Low level things if you take two two hundred milligram tablets, but the prescription dose is six hundred to eight hundred milligrams. 
So if you take it as prescribed by a physician with food and you have no intolerance to it for a short period of time in the proper dose, it can be as strong as a narcotic without the side effects. Wow. So it's you, people just don't realize, they're like, well, I can't just take Advil. I've got to take something stronger. If you take it the proper dose, it's excellent. So there's there's a lot of ways to do it, but I've learned just by talking to the patients that that goes a long way. Well, let me continue on with my story. So yeah. whenever I play golf or go through a hard workout with that right shoulder that you did the surgery on or I'm doing some dry needle uh, therapy now, mm-hmm. and it, it hurts. But you know what I do now? We talked about this in our show a few weeks ago with Karen Malkin, the turmeric. Yes. Okay. I've, yeah. I've all of a sudden didn't realize that I could take more than one a day. Yes. I usually take one after breakfast. I take one after dinner. When my shoulder hurts and the pain disappears, and I think yeah. it's so much better than taking Motrin. Of course, so turmeric is right? a great one, and we use that as well. Yeah, it's a natural. It's a natural anti-inflammatory um, taken as prescribed in a regular in a in regular intervals can also have a huge impact, and it's very very safe. So it's I'm best of all worlds. I'm yeah. taking something that's natural instead of Motrin, right? And it's killing the pain. And I mean, you win in all worlds, right? I agree with you. No, it's a smart way to go. Good stuff. 